Hi, I'm Unruly Anime. This is my recap for the anime, The Unwanted Undead Adventurer. If you like my recaps, please consider subscribing. The story begins as a weak but brave adventurer makes his way through a dungeon. His name is Rent, and his mouth nearly drops to the floor when he encounters a terrifying winged monster that's ginormous and powerful. This thing looks insanely powerful, as we see that it has a mouth inside of its other mouth when it screams. Rent has never been more terrified in his life, and he just now realizes that he will not be able to survive this encounter. The giant Pokemon-looking beast makes its way towards our hero, so he can't stop shaking. He can't believe this is happening to him, as he thought he was going to achieve his goal of becoming a Mithril-class adventurer. That goal is probably going to get way harder as the beast bites down on him with all two of its mouths. <laughs> Some time later, Rent is surprised to find that he's still alive. But that surprise doesn't nearly compare to the bone-rattling shock he feels when he sees that he is somehow just a skeleton. The disbelief rattles him to his very empty core, and he screams in horror over what he has become. A look into the past shows a time when our brave protagonist still had flesh, organs, and stuff. This guy has no clue what's coming, so he's super optimistic to start another great day as an adventurer. It's seriously early in the morning, and that is typical for adventurers, but he thinks about how lucky nobles and scholars are since they can sleep late. Waking up early is going to be the least of this guy's problems, and he explains that he's a low-class adventurer. He was born and raised in a town way too small to be on a map and he travels through it to go get a job. These jobs are provided by the Adventurer's Guild, and they're given based on an adventure-specific rank and skill. The Guild probably does it this way so weak adventurers can't mess it up and get themselves killed or turn into undead skeletons. There are a ton of jobs ranging from awesome monster extermination to lame material gathering. Some boring-looking dudes call out to our boy, and Rent explains that he will be going back to the labyrinth because there aren't any good jobs. These lazy degenerates can't understand how Rent can work so much, so they left and went on their way. Rent explains that while most adventurers like to party up, he remains solo. It's not for any cool Lone Ranger type of reason, it's because he simply isn't very good. This guy's been adventuring for 10 years now, but he's still only in bronze, which is the second lowest rank. He makes a living selling stuff from cautious jobs he takes, but he is very frugal. This guy lives a pretty dull life, as he tries to be conscious of every move he makes. Well, he really screws that up, as he watched this guy walk right into the labyrinth that's going to change him forever. In this dungeon that has been thoroughly explored and completely deserted, Rent a shot to find a secret passageway. This is an amazing discovery, as he is likely the first person to find it. So Rent throws caution to the wind and begins exploring it. As he walks through the area, it becomes certain that it's unexplored so he hopes to find some valuable magical weapons. Rent becomes excited as he realizes that he can even make a small fortune by simply reporting this news to the guild. At this point, Rent is too dumb to notice all the obvious signs that this place is super dangerous, and he finds himself in a room where he meets his demise. We watch again as he comes face to face with the thing he calls a dragon, and he explains that it's the greatest of all monsters. According to legend, dragons take many forms, and some are considerably larger than most standard dragons. That is certainly the case for this dragon, as it seems to have just evolved into its final form. The sheer pressure exerted by this terrifying beast is enough to freeze our boy's rent, and he instantly realizes that he doesn't stand a chance against these dragon things. Back to the present, Rent wonders how he is still alive after being devoured. The shocking reality hits him, and he begins to wonder if he's even actually alive, since he's very much just a skeleton. What he is, it's an immortal monster known as an undead. Sure, that sounds cool, but a bishop or priest could easily destroy him with their purification magic, since the undead are not meant for this world. Rent is doing a lot of thinking for a guy that doesn't have a brain, and he begins to wonder if he's actually dead. He is still conscious and has his memories, so he must be alive to some extent. Unable to answer all these existential questions, Rent decides to head back to town, but quickly realizes that doing so will only get him in trouble. He will be captured and probably executed. Rent doesn't want to die just yet, 
but he confuses himself when he starts questioning his existence again. Brent finally decides to just ignore all his problems and get out of this room as soon as possible. As he exits, Brent explains the mysteries of the labyrinths. No one really knows where they come from or how they work. There are many all around the world, and tons of valuable treasures can be found inside them. However, monsters lurk around every corner. Everyone is busy at some new labyrinth right now, but Solo Adventures should be coming to this dungeon in a few days. Brent plans to ask them for some advice on his situation, but quickly realizes that he will have to learn how to talk without a tongue. Just then, an actual skeleton monster appears, and Brent prepares to fight his twin. He can't even really move properly as he feels so heavy, and he determines that it must have something to do with his lack of muscles and all the other stuff non-dead people have. He was pretty weak already as a human, but now it's way worse. These skeletons were actually pretty easy for him to defeat as a human, but he can't even raise his sword without falling now. Brent freaks out as he is totally vulnerable, but the dumb skeleton is even worse than he is. <laughs> Brent realizes that he can't use any fancy sword techniques, considering he's just a bunch of floating bones. But he remembers that he can use spirit energy. Luckily, it works, even though he isn't really a human anymore, and he uses it to buff up his physical abilities. With his attack power raised, Brent absolutely destroys his opponent's skull, but he gets shocked when the thing starts to glow. He realizes that he just recovered the spirit energy he just used and wonders what could be happening. A look into the past shows a woman teaching Rent a thing or two about monsters. They have a mysterious trait. With time and experience, they evolve into greater things. This is true for humans as well, since they grow with training. But monsters are on another level. She uses skeletons as an example. Usually, skeletons simply remain skeletons, but on rare occasions, they evolve into ghouls. This is known as existential evolution, and Brent gets the idea. He thinks about how ghouls are also undead, but they sort of resemble humans since they have flesh. If he can somehow become a ghoul, then all he will have to do is wear robes and masks so that he might be able to return to town without people being terrified of his boniness. Brent finds some optimism, as his new goal now is to defeat monsters in the labyrinth and become a ghoul. Back in town, we see that Rent's friend is disappointed that he never came, so she will just make dinner for herself. Back in the dungeon, we see that Rent is putting in work, as he has already defeated five skeletons. He has gotten his mobility back and learned that life from his defeated enemies heals him. Because of it, he can use spirit energy. During every battle, Rent decides to find some stronger monsters and finds a slime. They are still considered weak, but they are not to be underestimated. Physical attacks are not as effective on these types, but Rent doesn't have the ability to use offensive magic. All he is capable of is starting fire, which is not suitable for battle, so he decides that he must attack with his sword anyway. There are really only two ways to defeat a slime, and that is either by piercing its core or by breaking it apart until it can't regenerate. After dodging the slime's attack, Rent counters and is shocked to see that he did it. He determines that he just got lucky by striking its core, but he doesn't question his victory and takes a magic stone as his prize. He then collects the slime to be sold later since they're used as cosmetics to make ugly people less ugly. At the guild, two people discuss how some newbies have been looking for a party to join. They were going to recommend that she party up with Rent, but he hasn't been around lately. The newbie was pressed for money, so a guild member recommended that she go to an easy labyrinth to find treasure and materials. She didn't know it, but this labyrinth is the same one Rent is in. In the labyrinth, Rent explains how he doesn't feel things like sleep or hunger, which is fine since anything he eats would probably just end up going right through his bones. He has been fighting non-stop too, but it's becoming clear that existential evolution takes a long time. His physical abilities have come back, and he can use mana too. What's most surprising is that he can still use his divinity despite being undead. In addition to curing injuries and illnesses, divinity can purify water and delay the spoilage of food. Brent uses it to make some bread last for three more days, and he hopes that he will have a normal body that needs to eat bread by then. For now, he refocuses on his goal and thinks about how many monsters he can take on at once. He is a pretty conservative guy, so he decides that if he encounters more than four monsters, he will run. 
he shouldn't encounter more than five in this low-level labyrinth. But if he does, Rent determines that it will be the end of him. Rent then gets really down on himself for being weak. Even after being an adventurer for 10 years and training for 20 years, he has spirit, energy, mana, and divinity. Even the highest ranked adventurers rarely have all three but Rent wishes, he could have just one strong power. Usually, people like him who are not cut out to be adventurers quit. However, Rent trained every single day without fail to try to make it work. He even asked that one girl to teach him about monsters and magic. He has continued trying in order to achieve his goal of becoming a Mithril class adventurer. It's the highest rank, and not even naturally gifted people reach it easily. At this rank, you will find those who have saved entire nations. Rent is determined to become one, and not even being turned into a skeleton will stop him. Rent starts taking out more skeletons and wonders if he's getting stronger than when he was a human. He eventually takes out another slime with ease and becomes certain that he's getting stronger. Rent collects some more slime goo but stops when the light comes out of it. This time is shockingly much different than the others. As his body begins to change, muscles form all over his body, and hair bursts out of his skull. Hair, skin, and eyes follow soon after. And when the process is done, he's finally able to make some rolling noises. Brent has successfully evolved into a ghoul. He is really just a creepy, dried-out corpse, but he's just glad to finally have flesh again. Oh. This is a major step in the right direction. Most importantly, if he keeps working hard, Rent thinks he might be able to become an even higher ranking undead, possibly even a vampire. With now having flesh, Rent gives his voice a try, but all that comes out is a roar. He is glad just to be able to make noise and gives it another try. He manages to say hello and good morning, but he sounds like a terrifying zombie more than anything, and he determines that it will need some practice. I appreciate you viewing my anime recap, Unruly Family. Please let me know what you think about Unwanted Undead Adventurer by liking, sharing, subscribing, and leaving a comment.